All right, so next up we have uh, Secure Secrets in Kubernetes with Vault by Harsh. Uh, Harsh is also, uh, you know, also loves a chess, I think, and and uh, also has interest in sci-fi. So I'll let Harsh introduce himself. So the talk is about, you know, kind of using Vault inside Kubernetes and, and talk about some of the kind of the life cycle, uh, you know, management of a secret and so on. So Harsh, take it away. Thanks, uh, Anuv, uh, for the introduction. Um, uh, I, yeah, screen share. There you go. Um, okay. Is my screen visible? Yeah, we can see it. Cool. So um, today we are going to uh, look at uh, securing secrets in Kubernetes, like why you should be using uh, Vault in such environments. Um, and before we get right into it, I'll introduce myself a bit. So I'm a developer at Sivo uh, Cloud, where I mostly build things uh, related to Kubernetes and uh, for Kubernetes. And uh, other than that, I love contributing to open source projects, uh, which led me to be a uh, uh, maintainer at OpenUBS, which is a storage project, again, for Kubernetes. Um, and other than that, I'm a HashiCorp ambassador at the T-shirt. Um, and lastly, I love chess. Like I'm the kind of person who could just wake up in the middle of night and be ready to play it. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much about me. Um, so diving right into it. Uh, so first, we look at introduction. Uh, like what Vault is. Uh, spoiler alert: It's like the best secret management platform out there. Uh, better than uh, I think what cloud providers provide right now. Um, and then we'll uh, discuss about why uh, we should be using it instead of the native Kubernetes secrets. Uh, I mean, why introduce a external thing when you have it inside the Kubernetes? So that might be a valid uh, point to discuss. So we'll dive into that. And lastly, we'll run through a quick walkthrough of uh, uh, using uh, world gates uh, to inject secrets in uh, deployments and stuff like that. Lastly, I'll open up the flow for some questions. So, uh, secret. So, secret management platforms they usually have this notion of providing, uh, like the secret should be centralized, and that's because in most environments, um, it's hard to keep track of uh, who has the secret and secure it at different places, because. A secret could be uh, an API key could be in someone's laptop and we don't know who, who has access to that laptop and um, it's hard to identify like all the uh, places there are and secure all the places uh, those secrets could be. So uh, the notion is to just uh, take all the secrets together and put it in one place and dare I say it, that place can be called as well. Uh, so the next property is uh, Having role uh, RBAC, uh, a role and entity an entity based access, and um, if we look at it uh, uh, in terms of in an organization, uh, users usually have some sort of identity through GitHub or uh, or provider uh, or SAML providers or whatnot. And when it comes to applications, uh, we have limited options, and it's typically based out of environments. And in Kubernetes, we have service accounts for that. And what this allows us to do is once we have identified and pointed out a role or an entity, we can uh, grant policies to it and to say what it's allowed to do and what it's not allowed to do. So that uh, allows us to have a granular control over uh, what we have. And this is the next part is what uh, uh, makes Vault the best secret uh, management platform, I think, uh, which is the dynamic secrets. So with dynamic secrets, the notion is uh, if you have a database and the database has uh, usually what we do is we have shared secrets and uh, Vault tries to eliminate that problem altogether. So uh, if you have a database credential, uh, which each uh, user would have their own credential and uh, even applications, each application would have its own credential. And doing and doing that manually by a database administrator that's just painful. Uh, Vault just does it for us out of the box. And uh, uh, again, we have uh, various secret engines, and uh, uh, we'll 
we can talk about that but uh, basically all all data at rest is encrypted at uh, aes 256 gcm which is like the best one out there i think and uh, tra in transit we have like tls 1.3 so even that's uh, top of the class and the last two are uh, break glass procedures uh, audit logs help us uh, know like what happened when and where uh, which is really key to identifying when something bad happens and the last one is leasing and revoking secrets so this is also essential because when you have granted a secret to someone then you uh, have a time based access control of when they need to authenticate again so that's the leasing part of it and revoking is when uh, it's it's again a part of a break glass procedure when you want uh, someone to stop uh, accessing that secret you just revoke the secret access and things work so the workflow would pretty much be like the client authenticates themselves uh, to vault and this could be uh, so the client could be an application or a user and uh, they could authenticate, authenticate via github or whatever the authentication mechanisms world provides and you can have your own authentication because custom authentication mechanisms uh, you can write plugins for that as well and uh, once you have done that uh, based on the security uh, policies which have been defined uh, you can access certain secrets and these secrets are again leased back to you and uh, based on the time or uh, TTL on the secrets you, you need to authenticate again and uh, yeah that's pretty much the overview of it so before we uh i'm going to quickly launch a kubernetes cluster right now i have a backup one just in case uh, i lose my internet or something and time goes away so i'm using siva cloud for this uh it's a company i work for and uh basically uh what you can do is you can just select vault over here you can select uh we don't we don't have uh, support for the production mode right now but uh you can se select between dev and standalone and once you do that you can just create a cluster and uh you'll have it ready for the slide ends i guess uh let's see so what's wrong with kubernetes secrets uh kubernetes secrets by default they're not encrypted when stored in hcd and uh that means that anyone on the operation side who has access to the node can just read the secret simply in text even though they probably shouldn't they have access to it so that could be a, a problem um and the next point is uh there's indirect access to kubernetes secrets what that means is even if the user doesn't have access to create or read secrets uh and they have the ability to create a deployment or a pod they could uh, create a deployment in the namespace and that deployment could ha would have access to all the secrets in that namespace. And that sort of uh, uh, shade model can lead to security loopholes. So that's, uh, that's a problem there. And uh, the last one is like le leasing or revoking is not possible. Like you can just change the secret, but uh, I, know, I know I just said like, uh, it's probably a bad thing to uh, have common shared secrets, but in case you do, like an example, then you would like to revoke the secret uh, and you can't just do that uh, and have the other application work as it is. You would have to change the secret and update both the applications accordingly. So let's see if we, okay, still creating. And um, benefits of using uh, Vault. Uh, Kates is that the apps can usually be unaware of Vault. Um, so Vault basically injects it into a config, uh, like uh, into a file. So that file, like if your application reads it from a file, then it's great. Like you can just, uh, your apps can just be totally unaware of it. And it usually requires no change uh, to your deployment. Um, and another, the last thing is, uh, it still uses uh, Kubernetes native mechanisms like uh, namespaces and service accounts. So hopefully the cluster is ready. Yeah, it's uh, ready. So now I'm going to switch to my terminal and save the config of it. Should be 
page. And that's So what we are going to do is we are just going to run through a quick model of we are going to deploy an application. We are going to configure. Uh, we are going to inject some secrets in Vault and then uh, configure the R back on it and then uh, see how it ties with uh, service accounts and namespaces. Okay, this is That's bad. Um, I'm going to try it once more, or maybe I can. Okay, I'm going to probably switch to the backup cluster I had. So I have a back. Uh, I, I I haven't done much in this cluster. I just installed it the same way. Uh, and let's see. Yeah. So I have Vault running here. And what I'm going to do is exec into this port. And let me just uh, copy paste the commands because I. I think that would save time. Oh, yeah, I need to switch to world names, please. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm messing this up. <laughs> So we are inside the vault container. Now, what we're going to do now is uh, just add some uh, secrets in this and uh, just explore the key value store uh, part of the vault. So what this does is uh, like we have just put the secret in there and it has returned as the metadata and we can uh, get the same secret back. Uh, what can we get? So we get back uh, some data and this data has metadata and data inside it. So uh, we're going to insert some more uh, here. Uh, let's see, I'm going to copy paste this again. So we've inserted two more uh, of them and we can list all of these secrets now. So we see that there are three secrets. And uh, what we need to do next is uh, create a policy about who can access the secrets and, uh, oh, sorry, uh, what permissions the secret should have. So uh, this policy is just going to say that the ability would be uh, to just read the secrets. And uh, that's pretty much we're going to assign. There's no need uh, for it to have write access. We just want the read access here. And we are going to uh, write this to Vault. So this just uploads the policy to Vault. The next thing we're going to do is enable Kubernetes uh, authentication. Uh, this is so that we can have we can use uh, service accounts and namespaces as the uh, backbone for our Kubernetes authentication. And what this also requires is uh, for the configuration to work, we need to have a token review uh, JWD. What that means is uh, uh, whenever requests arrive, Vault is going to authenticate to Kubernetes and verify it based on the service account token it has. Um, and uh, the rest of the two fields are so that it can communicate to Kubernetes itself. So now we are going to create a role for our ap application, which we haven't deployed it. We'll get to it. So uh, what this role says is that 
uh, we have an, a role named my app. Uh, this is independent of Kubernetes. We, it, this is a vault thing. Uh, so the next thing is we bonded to a uh, service account name. So we need to name our, uh, our application, our deployment should have the service account as app and the namespace, uh, it should be related to, should be uh, the namespace demo. So we'll have to keep that. Uh, and last thing is the policy, which we defined uh, about here. Okay, where is that? Okay, never mind. Yeah, so we had defined a policy uh, app and uh, other than that, last thing is TTL, which is uh, how frequently should this uh, require to authenticate again and get the token back. So this is part of the leasing uh, thing Vault has. So now we have done that. Now we can just get out of this pod and we can, uh, this is all the admin had to do. Now we put on our dev hats and as an application developer, uh, let's say we have a namespace demo and we are, uh, we have now put on our developer hats. So we have the simple deployment where uh, all we do is we just have this one uh, replica and the essential part is we provide the service account name which it needs and we create the service account down here. So we just create that. And it's created now, right now there's nothing fancy going on. Like, uh, we just have the port doesn't have access to any secrets. Um, so we can just exec and just see that there are smokes. Uh, we can just this and so by default, like, uh, you'll have your secrets injected and in, slash vault, but here we have not injected any secret yet. So there, there's no such uh, folder right away. So what we're going to do now is inject some secrets and how, the way we do it is pretty simple. Uh, so we have this annotation. So uh, when we set, set this annotation, what happens is there's a init container and a sidecar being injected. And what these do is uh, the init container actually populates a secret or like authenticates to vault and takes the secret and puts it in the volume. And uh, what the sidecar does is uh, allows us to uh, look at some of the uh, templating functionality, which we'll take a look in a moment. So anyway, like uh, right now we're just setting, uh, enabling this, and we are saying that uh, this application should have access to the uh, secret hello world. And uh, the not obvious part here is, uh, this part, the agent index secret hyphen hello world is the name of uh, the file which we want it to be. So if you want this to be by world, then like uh, you would have to, uh, the secret will be at the same location, but uh, the file would be named as by world. So uh, let's apply this to our deployment. So, now we should be able to see that uh, new port coming up. And yeah, you can see the age. And if I just go back to, let me just show you that there was an init container indeed because not have seems. Yeah, so the init container just populated the secret and uh, the vault agent will run as a sidecar there. And you can totally disable uh, the sidecar to be there. Uh, and you can just have the inner content populate the secret. But we'll look at why you might want to have the sidecar uh, so. so if we take a look at what those, uh, yeah, now let's uh, look at uh, the secrets. Oops. And again, going to, okay, let's first list. Yeah, so we have a secret folder here. And if we just look at secrets, it will show that there's an hello world. And if we cat the file, uh, 
So let me just run this again, show it to the screen. So we have this uh, data, which is not so uh, user-friendly and can be as, uh, consumed directly by the application. Uh, so what this is, is the Golang uh, output directly. So if you remember, we had uh, in the KV get secret output, we had this uh, both parts, the metadata and the data. Um, so what our application probably needs is a formatted output. And uh, how we get that formatted output? uh is inside this so if we if you take a look like uh there's this uh, these both parts are the same like we have the agent inject true and the secret name and agent index status is what allows us to do this kind of thing so we, we want to update how the secret is inside the container so uh how that uh, is possible is with console template uh, I think this is called console tender, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so uh, if you're familiar with it using uh, other tools of HashiCorp, then it's great. Uh, but if not, it's pretty simple. So you just uh, reference the name of the secret here. And other, uh, then you can just use dot annotation and uh, follow through the values you want. So this, uh, we'll just compare it once we see the output so that uh, you have a better understanding. going to copy paste uh, this. So again, the pod will be recreated. As you can see, in four seconds, it was recreated. Now we can exec again into the pod. This time I'm not going to write pod. Or So you, you can see that uh, we have all the three secrets because in the uh, patch we had like all the three secrets there. So now let's read the secret and then I'll, I'll probably show like what's special about this. Yeah, so now we have this as a very nice uh, fine grained output. And uh, if you take a look, uh, it had like the Postgres string over here and the username was populated by the root annotation password as well. And it's, it's the same thing. Uh, the values were rendered uh, correctly and we can just use it. So uh, let's get back to slides. And the way it works internally is pretty simple. Like it it's a mutation webhook. And if you're familiar with Kubernetes, like uh, mutation webhooks sit on the side of the API server whenever an object is, uh, like before the object is stored into the etcd, uh, it goes through this uh, process of uh, uh, a series of validations. And what happens is uh, in our case, when we have had the annotations in the deployment, those annotations were noticed by the mutation webhook and that webhook uh, modified the uh, uh, resource or uh, deployment uh, object to include a, a sidecar container and init container. So that's how it, it works internally. And I'm open to taking any questions. I'm not sure how much time I took. And I have linked all the references uh, in place. Uh, and you can take a look at those and ask me questions later. And you can reach out to me at Twitter or my email and all the sites here. Thank you. Hello. Hey, Harsh. Hey. So Thanks. there were a few questions. Yeah, sure. Stop sharing. Yep. Yeah, so one of the first few questions was uh, what would be a good way to start getting more confident in projects like this? I think it was a generic question about 
probably high shikar tools or in general so what would you say to a person ramping up so i think like uh, one of the major things about hashiko projects was always that uh, the operational side of it it was never about the dev side of it because those have always been very smooth uh, and i think hashiko is already solving that issue with integrating with uh, major cloud providers and they've already uh, they already have uh, aws uh, vault and aws uh, uh with azure they have the console uh, integrated so uh, I, I think the operational side of it is already getting uh, I, I mean they are already providing it as a managed service with hashicorp cloud uh and the dev side has always been pretty much smooth like um the guides are very useful like uh, it's one of the best documentation sites i've uh, ever been through and there's a lot of uh, content on youtube available by the dev advocates so i would highly recommend to check that out but if it was uh, for Walt in particular, then I've linked a whole bunch of resources uh, in the references. And again, the it's all just the official documentation they have, and it's pretty good. Other other than that, there are a few GitHub links here and there uh, for uh, some of the example repos. So yeah. Thank you, Harsh, for that answer. Any more questions? Yes, there was one more. Uh, the question goes something like this. Is it possible to automate the password management of on-prem legacy applications running on middleware layer in Vault? That is the gist of the question. So the authentication layer, uh, like if it is some of, like if it's custom, then you can have a plugin for that authentication. And uh, based on your environment, you might like, uh, I'm, I'm not completely sure, like if there's an authentication, like in Kubernetes, we have service account tokens, uh, which can help. But uh, if your application has uh, some way of identifying itself, uh, then I, I think it will be possible. Like you just need to probably write some uh, plugins. Um, is there any more questions? Okay, so I think I, I ended up before my time, so I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to give that time to the next speaker. <laughs>